So other common arguments for protection. The first thing we're going to go through is saves jobs. Now the idea behind this is that buying foreign goods costs domestic jobs. This idea is totally wrong and I'm just going to put an X in this box to say that it's wrong. Free trade destroys some jobs and it creates other better jobs and that's a fact. Also free trade also increases foreign income and it enables foreigners to buy more of your domestic goods. So essentially, when foreigners buy more of your good, they demand your good. And when they demand your good, firms will probably need to make more of that good. And they'll probably need to make more jobs for more people. So, so jobs actually increase. So the idea behind this actually makes no sense at all. Protection to save particular jobs is super costly and it's stupid. And that's all you need to know. And that's what you should write it on your test if they ask you that question. But I'm just kidding. You shouldn't, you shouldn't write that it's stupid. <laughs> now, the second part is, uh, uh, second argument for protection is that it allows us to compete with cheap foreign labor. So high-wage countries cannot compete with a low-wage country. That is also wrong. Low-wage labor is less productive than high-wage labor. And that is a fact. But wages and productivity tells us nothing about competitive advantage. And competitive advantage is what we need to know because it measures the competitiveness. It is the only way to, to tell us, only way for us to know whether we can compete. If wages and productivity can't tell us anything about competitive advantage, then how will we know if we can compete with cheap foreign labor? This makes no sense. And again, it's a stupid idea. Penalizes lax environmental standards. Now, the idea behind this is that protection is good for the environment. That idea is also wrong. And these green pointers or notes are going to explain why. Free trade increases income. Now, poor countries have lower environmental standards than rich countries. So the poor countries don't spend as much money as rich countries on environment. And sometimes they do work that actually harms the environment. And this will actually raise environmental standards. So free trade would make more money for these poor countries. And then that will lead them to save the earth is what I'm thinking. So the idea that protection is good for the environment makes no sense at all. Why would you restrict free trade if free trade is only going to make everybody more money and make it more better for the environment because everybody will have more money and more time to save the environment. And the last point prevents rich countries from exploiting developing countries. This really follows from three in my point of view. And the idea behind this is well, well, I don't really know actually. <laughs> prevents rich countries from exploiting developing countries. The idea is pretty much to prevent the Western nations from exploiting all the third world countries, I guess. But yeah, it really falls from three. By trading with poor countries, this increases the demand for their goods. And this really will increase the demand for their labor. And that only implies that it raises the wage rate when, uh, when these firms and these other poorer countries Need more labor, uh, need more labor to fill in the demand, and that really implies that uh, there are more opportunities. So this expands the opportunities, and with expanded opportunities, this only means that there will be a rise in income for people in poorer countries. Now, methods of getting the things a country sells. So there are really four ways, uh, hire domestic labor and produce domestically, hire foreign labor and produce in another country, buy finished goods, components or services from a domestic firm, or buy finished goods, components or services from foreign firms. Um, yeah, there's only really four methods of getting things a country sells, and those are the four. And uh, I think you should know them. Good thing to know. Now, the definitions of outsourcing, offshoring, and offshoring outsourcing. Well, I, I really only knew the first two, and I really forgot about this one until I got back into doing these videos. 
What outsourcing really is, is it happens to be when a firm buys finished goods, components, or services from domestic firms or from foreign firms. I used to think that outsourcing only, imp uh, only implies to foreign firms or buying things from foreign firms. Well, that's not actually the case. It includes domestic firms and foreign firms. Offshoring happens when a firm hires foreign labor and produces in foreign countries or buys finished goods, components, or services from foreign firms. So offshoring is all about foreigners um, hiring for the foreign labor, having foreigners make your product and then ship them over to your country to sell them, or having or buying just everything from the, the foreigners because they cost less, I guess. Offshoring outsourcing, this occurs... Uh, when a firm buys finished goods, components, or services from foreign firms. And yeah, it's pretty much offshoring and outsourcing combined, I guess. Well, it does have both of the words in the, definite, in the, in the term. Now, we're going to go through why international trade is... Why... The, we're gonna, just going to go through why the question why international trade is restricted. The key reason why international trade restrictions are imposed in Canada and most other developed countries is because of an activity called rent-seeking. Now, rent-seeking is pretty much just lobbying and other political activities seeking to capture gains from trade. And we've seen the free trade benefits that can... Uh, that, that free trade benefits consumers but shrinks the producer surplus of firms that competes in markets with imports. So uh, those who gain from free trade are the millions of consumers of low-cost imports. However, what you gotta know is that the benefit per individual consumer is actually really small. So those who lose are the producers of import competing items. So compared to the million, millions and millions of consumers, there are only a few thousands, few thousand producers. So thus we have producers having a strong incentive to, to actually lobby for a tariff and lobby for a tariff or an import quota against free trade, I guess. And the gains from free trade for any one consumer it's too small for them to spend any time and money lobbying for free trade. So you have all these millions of people that are consumers and they all gain from free trade. But because the gain that they have, the gain that they gain, is so infinitesimally small, they really, it's really not worth their while to go spend time and money lobbying for free trade. But for the producers who are just a small amount compared to the consumers, because there are only a few thousand producers, the gains that they have from uh, lobbying for tariffs and, and import quotas are actually much, much greater than, uh, than, well, the gains that they get from doing such actions or doing such an activity such as rent seeking is much, much more greater than what individual consumers will, will gain. So, each group will weigh their benefits against their costs and choose the best action that they choose the best action for themselves. So it's obvious though that the group against free trade will lobby more than the government or more than the group for free trade because individually they gain more and the group against free trade is or are the producers and the group for free trade are the consumers and the producers stand to gain a way lot more than the consumers because there's only a few thousand producers and there are millions of consumers which won't gain very much from lobbying for free trade that the producers stand to gain if their lobbying is successful and this is the end of this chapter i really hope you enjoyed watching this video or this this chapter uh, please rate, comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and check us out in uh, in our social media in the description below. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, and I uh, hope to see you guys again next time in the next chapter. Um, see you guys next time.